Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Bev Live. I am your host, Bjorn Landwer, and it is 2023. Um, last time uh, I saw you all, it was 2022, 2023. Uh, we got great, great things planned uh, for the year. Welcome, everybody, um, watching live right now. Also, for those who are watching in our archive, thank you for, for watching. Uh, maybe we'll see you live next time. Um, so it's a new year. We have all kinds of amazing things planned for the new year um, that we will share over um, the next weeks. Can't wait. Um, it will be it will be an exciting year for 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 Bad Life. We've we've planned so many great things, and yeah, well. Uh, let's get started. Um, we finished off the last year with a series on different uh, varietals. Um, you know, we talked about Cabernet Sauvignon, we talked about Riesling, Pinot Noir, and today we're talking about uh, a grape that is known by basically two names. Uh, they call it Shiraz in Australia and they call it um, Syrah in other parts of the world. Um, so when when somebody says Shiraz, they usually pretty much assume that it is a wine from Australia. When they refer to it as Syrah, um, it's pretty much always from the rest of the world. So for those who don't know the difference, there is no difference. It's the same grape varietal just grown in different parts of um, the world. Um, and, you know, the same can be said for other grape varietals, um, like Pinot Noir or, as they call it in Germany, Spätburgunder. So um, Shiraz or uh, Syrah um, is a dark skinned grape um, that in some parts of the world makes a medium to um, full bodied wine and in other parts of the world, a really, really big and powerful wine. So um, let's start with the lighter versions. Um, Northern Rhone makes some amazing um, Syrah. Um, Washington State here in the U.S. Um, makes some really, really nice um, Syrah. Um, and um, those wines are, like I mentioned, they, it depends on the area where the varietals grow. So those wines are a little bit um, lighter in style. When I say lighter, I don't mean like really, really light. It's lighter than, let's say, your Barossa Shiraz. Um, they tend to be medium-bodied to full-bodied and, um, you know, have... Um, red uh, um, fruit variety, red fruit characteristics um, when you taste the wines. Um, they go into like maybe the minty part um, a little bit. Um, so a little bit um, compared to, let's say, Barossa, I, I wouldn't say cooler climate or cool climate. I would say cooler climate. And then you have your, you know, the biggest ones are probably, and we all know Barossa, Shiraz, and we actually have one down here. So check it out. Go on to the, the um, check out the wines that are basically displayed under me. You will find um, a really, really nice um, Shiraz, actually two down there. One from Barossa. And that's what people associate when they think about, when they think about um, Shiraz, they think Barossa. Um, the one we have is a beautiful example of um, Barossa Shiraz. A powerful wine, yet with plenty of um, acid to, you know, go well with your food, uh, not overpowering the food. Um, but I do want to tell you, it's like if you do go Shiraz for for dinner, you know, have something um, a little bit more, a little bit, you know, some maybe something gamey, a little bit more powerful food, so that the Shiraz doesn't overpower um, the um, the food. So what do the Australians do? What do they have with their Shiraz? Um, you know, big sausage um, on the grill or the barbie, as the, um, the Australians call it, or, you know, a big piece of meat. Um, that's what, if you want to go the Australian route, that's what you would want to do uh, when you go more the, uh, let's say, French route, the Northern Rhone route. Um, you know, you go a little bit lighter. Um, you can even go into, you know, uh, gamey dishes, uh, duck, um, pasta, um, you know, and then on the Australian side, you go a little bit bigger. Um, so where is um, Syrah grown in the world? I mentioned um, France. Then, you know, here we have uh, Washington State. We have um, Central Coast in California. 
then we if we go into um, the um, South American uh, part, um, Chile makes some amazing Syrah. Staying on the, in the Southern Hemisphere, um, I recently had some really, really nice um, Syrah from uh, South Africa. Uh, then obviously then we go over to, we go over to um, Australia. There's some Syrah being grown in New Zealand. Um, then coming back to, to Europe, we have um, some really nice examples um, in, in Spain. So, um, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's a grape that's grown all over the world. I believe it's the seventh most frequently grown grape varietal um, in the world. And I can highly recommend for you to, to, to try it some, especially if you are like, let's say you're a Cabernet Sauvignon drinker, you, you like your big wines, you like your Napa wines, you know, try something a little bit different. Go to like, you know, get, get yourself some Central Coast um, Syrah or get yourself, get, you know, go down here and, and, and check out our wines down here. Um, like I said, some really nice um, examples. We even have a limestone uh, Shiraz. So that's basically if you go south from the Barossa, you go towards um, the, the limestone coast area. Um, beautiful example of um, Shiraz being grown down there. It's not quite as... Um, powerful as you would find in the Barossa, um, but I really, really like it. I mean, it's it's um, it's, it's some amazing Shiraz that's being made down there. And st sticking with the um, Australia example, even within Australia, we have different microclimates, but different climates where different styles are grown. So if you go to certain parts of um, of Australia, let's look at, for example, Victoria, or let's look at uh, Western Australia, you have more uh, cooler climate um, Shiraz that's being grown there, more in the style of the uh, the northern grown. Um, so I can I can only tell you like try try the different styles and, and if, just for fun sometimes have some friends over, buy some wines from us, uh, buy some uh, wines um, um, and compare the uh, the different um, styles that you can find within one varietal I and mean, it's a really fun activity you can do this with any with any grape varietal um, try try um, you know try a little game like you know do it a, make it a blind tasting and and and, and have people guess where where, where, where the wine is from which makes some some interesting conversation piece and I'm sure you're gonna find some somebody who gets them all and somebody who may who may not who may discover something that they didn't know they would like. And um, yeah, it can be fun that way. So um, yeah, coming back to uh, to Bev Live for, for 2023, um, like I said, I can't say anything just yet, but we got great things planned um, for, for the year. We will continue to um, talk about the, um, the different varietals. Um, we will have guest speakers, we will have wineries on here um, so we will post some news soon, um, and we will talk about it here um, at Bev Live, and uh, keep you updated on on everything. So for now, um, I wish everybody uh, a happy new year. I should probably say this at the beginning: Happy New Year, everybody! And um, I will um, see you next week. Uh, and um, yeah, um, I will be here probably. Uh, next Friday, we're going to try to do um, streams a little bit more, more more frequently. But like I said, we'll we'll update everybody very soon. So thanks for watching. Bye.